In this video, we're gonna upgrade the graphics from looking like this to look like this. Let's go. First of all, open the project from episode 4 and in the hierarchy, create a new object called level. After that, you can also reset its position to be 0. And inside the level object, we will create another empty object which we will call room 1 into which we will drag the ground and the wall object. Alright, when that's done, the second thing that I want us to change is the background color of the camera. And I'm gonna pick this deep uh, blue purplish color. And if you want to go with the same, I'm gonna put the hexadecimal code on the screen. Now, let's import the asset package that we will use for the graphics. Go to the asset store and search for Pixel Adventure 1. Once you're here, press the blue button to add this package to your assets and press it again to open the package in Unity. Your package manager should open up automatically in Unity and you should see the package selected. If it doesn't happen, then just open it yourself manually and type in Pixel Adventure into the search bar. Now press import, then import again, wait a little bit and you should see the Pixel Adventure 1 folder in your assets. And just to keep everything organized, let's take it and drag it into the sprites folder. Now open the Pixel Adventure folder and go to Assets Terrain to find the ground sprite. As you can see, we have two images here and we'll be working with the first one for now. So select it, go to the sprite mode on the right side, select multiple, then press Sprite Editor right underneath it. If this dialog pops up, just press apply. Right, now we are in the sprite editor, and as you can see we have multiple types of surfaces here. And to use them, the first thing that we want to do is press slice in the top left corner, then choose automatic, then press the slice button. In most cases Unity does a good job of splitting elements if there is a space between them. But as you can see in this case we have multiple elements that are attached to one another. So let's do some manual editing. Select the ground with the green grass and zoom in on it. Now drag the edges in until you get the result that you see on the screen. As you can see I cut out the black outline and one other pixel. And that's because I want to make this block tileable. When you're done with this process just press apply and close the sprite editor window. Now if you press the white arrow that shows you the contents of this image you'll see the ground sprite that we just edited. So let's finally put it in the game and replace the old ground that we have right now. So let's create a new object, call it ground and reset its position to zero. This is gonna be the container object. Now inside this object let's create another object and let's call it ground1. And this is gonna be the actual holder of the sprite. So once you're done creating it, add the sprite render component to it. Now just drag in the sprite that we need and you're gonna see the first chunk of ground appear on the screen. But it's pretty small for now so let's adjust the size. I'm gonna use a scale of 5 and place the block exactly where the old ground used to be. When you are happy with the result, just duplicate this ground chunk and let's place the next one. Now, let me show you an important tip that's gonna make your work a lot faster. After you select the second ground object, click on this button. Now, hover your mouse over the lower left edge of the object, press V on your keyboard and hold it down, and now just drag your mouse to the right, and you're gonna see that the object is gonna snap automatically to the piece of ground next to it. Now, repeat the process enough time that you've covered up the entire screen. You can go into the game window from time to time to see how much space you've got left and in which direction you need to move. When you're all done, you can safely delete the old ground object and on the new one let's put a box collider and adjust its size. Also don't forget to change the tag and the layer of the object on which you put the box collider. Alright, we're done with the ground. Now you can just take the ground parent object and drag it underneath room 1 if you haven't done so already. Alright, we're done with the ground, now let's move on to the walls. Select the terrain sprite again and open the sprite editor. And we're gonna use the wooden walls on the left here, so zoom in on them. Now drag the edges around until you get the same result that I have on the screen right now. When you're done, press the apply button and close this window again. And now let's delete the old wall object, we don't need it anymore. And create a new one, drag it to the left side of the screen and call it wall left. Let's also add a box collider 2D component to it, change the layer to wall, and let's leave it for now. We're gonna edit the box collider size after we add the graphics. Now let's create an empty game object underneath wall left and call it wall 1 and add a sprite renderer component to it. Then just find the wall sprite that we created and drag it into the sprite renderer. I'm gonna increase the scale to 5 again and drag the object down all the way until it touches the ground. 
When you're happy with the position, just start duplicating it and snapping it to the object below like we did previously. Continue until you have a finished wall. When you're done, open the sprite editor and let's create a new sprite. This one we're gonna put in the corner of the walls to connect them to the ceiling. So make the same selection as I did here, press apply and exit the editor again. Now repeat the same process that we did before. Create an empty object, assign a sprite renderer and drag in the necessary sprite. Now increase the scale up to 5 and make it snap to the corner of the wall. And just to keep everything organized I'm gonna rename it to wall edge. Now let's drag the wall down a bit so it doesn't go off the top of the screen. And remember you can always open the game window to see how it looks inside the game. I'm not exactly happy with how this looks so I'm gonna do a couple more tweaks here. First of all I'm gonna make the walls a bit thicker by increasing the scale on the X to 7. Then I'm gonna increase the size of the wall edge to be 7 on all axes. And finally I'm gonna drag the wall a bit more down and to the right so it's not as close to the edge as it was before. If you did the same thing I did, you're gonna see that the bottom part of the wall is now covering up the ground. To solve this, just select the ground segment and increase the order in layer property from 0 to 1. And the final thing before we finish with this wall is to fix the box collider size on it. So select the wall left object and on the box collider 2D component just press edit collider and drag around the edges until it looks good. Alright, wall left done. Now we can just duplicate it and drag it to the right side of the screen to create the right wall. For this wall I want to delete the two wood segments on the bottom just because I want the player to be able to go through this space to go on to the next room. And obviously I will rename the object to wall right just to keep everything tidy. And I'll also change the scale on the x axis to minus 1 just to make it look like the wall is flipped. Alright, let's create the ceiling now. Create an empty object, call it ceiling and drag it to the top part of the screen. Now inside of it create another empty object, call it ceiling1 and attach a sprite renderer to it. I'm gonna use the same sprite and the same scale that I used for the walls, but in this case I'm just gonna rotate it to minus 90 degrees on the Z axis. Then just snap it to the corner of the left wall and repeat the process until you have a finished ceiling. If your ceiling is also covering up the wall corner like it does for me, just select the wall corner object and increase the order and layer property. And finally let's put a box collider 2D on the ceiling, change the layer to wall and adjust the size of the box collider. And finally select the right wall and adjust the box collider on that as well. Now I want to add one small detail that will make the scene look better and will also help guide players. Go into the Pixel Adventure folder and open Assets. Then go to Items, Checkpoints, Start. In here you're gonna find this nice arrow with a direction flag next to it, so just take it and drag it into the scene. Increase the scale up to 5 on all axes and drag it around until you're happy with how it looks. Ok, this does it for me. Now let's move on to the final part of the video, which is the background of the room. Also, please remember to drag all the objects that we just created inside the room 1 object. Maintaining structure is gonna be important down the line. Next step, create a new object and call it background. Now go to the pixel adventure folder, assets, background and pick a background that you like and drag it into the scene. I'm gonna choose brown. Increase the scale of the object to 5 and start playing with the position of it. Now take this object and put it underneath the background object and now you can start duplicating it and snapping it to the previous ones. Keep in mind that in some cases you might need to change the scale up a bit and move the objects around so that they fit well enough into the scene. But I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out. When you're done with the first row you can just duplicate it and drag it down to create the second row. As you can see in my case I had to change the scale on the Y axis to 5.5 so that the tiles fit well enough. So don't be afraid to experiment with these values or maybe create something entirely different if that's what you have in mind. Sorry about the delay on this episode, I had fever and headaches for an entire week, but I'm better now, so the next episode will come out a lot faster and it will focus on camera movement. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button. That's it, go make some games now.